We are Team Digital Effects. The team consists of Imogen, John, Ashi, Eva, and Katie. Um, we have a beautiful app which assesses the mood of the UK through Twitter data. And the idea was born out of my uh, experience in the financial markets where uh, news about public sentiment uh, can have significant impact. However, instead of using um, analyzing news, we decided to go to the source of public sentiment. And uh, a decade ago, analyzing, uh, conducting opinion research would have meant talking to small groups of people. Uh, nowadays, uh, the proliferation of social media allows to collect uh, data on a massive scale, and particularly about public opinion. Uh, the data collection uh, that is uh, allowed through this mean is then combined with machine learning to augment our understanding of, uh, our understanding of public mood. And uh, Imogen will now uh, walk us through a demo of the app. Thanks. Um, so with our app, you can type in your search query um, and then click Get Mood. And then there will be a rather long lag. <laughs> this is the actual loading time. Because in the background, first it has to use that search query to go through a bunch of different tweets <laughs> and get the right thing. <laughs> um, then it has to pass it to our classifier, which will then classify those as tweets as positive or negative on the fly to then give it to our pie chart. Um, as you can see, people don't like Justin Bieber that much. Who knew? <laughs> Um, you can then go through the tweets yourself and try and figure out, you know, UK, what do you mean? <laughs> I'll now pass you on to Ashi. Uh, thanks, Imogen. Um, as Imogen mentioned, our classifier algorithm classifies tweets into positive and negative. Let's look at a simple example of how a naive based classifier that we used would classify an email as spam or not. Let's say we are looking at um, email with PPI mentioned in it. When it receives this email, it first calculates the likelihood of receiving a spam email. It then calculates the probability of a spam mail containing PPI text. Depending on the calculations, it concludes if a mail is spam or not. Um, if you would like to know more about it, please feel free to contact any of us after this presentation. Uh, why did we choose machine learning? Sorry. Why did we choose machine learning? Because, uh, firstly, because it's very adaptive. Uh, like you saw, uh, it was used to classify males. But other than that, it's used in face recognition, uh, more and more in uh, health and life sciences, the fraud detection, and um, um, in-store shopping pattern recognition. And it's very, very accurate. And that's probably why it's being used in decision making. Um, regarding uh, initialization of phase three clinical trials for uh, potentially new drugs. Uh, despite being very simple, uh, naive based classifier is quite effective and very fast, and that's why we went with that algorithm. I would now like to pass it on to John, who will talk more about the processes that we um, used. Thank you. So, as a group, we spent a long time um, to get the correct specifications for the app, and without them, we wouldn't know where to begin, nor know what features to implement. We discussed as a group um, to see what everyone's vision was for the app. This led us to a list of specifications, and we narrowed down our minimum viable product from there, and we had three versions of our app. Excuse the diagrams, but I'll walk you through them. So the first diagram on the far right was uh, our MV um, MVP, um, and it was as simple as training the classifier with movie reviews and getting the response onto the web page. How this would work is you would uh, type in something into search, and the classifier would identify if it was positive or negative, and then return the result. The second version, uh, which was in the middle there, was to collect data from Twitter and represent the data uh, onto a page in a graphical representation. And we had to dynamically render um, the pie chart in correlation to the tweets being updated. And the third version was a line graph, which would represent sentiment versus time, and would give a comparison between the two. And when we first trained our classifier, we just typed in Trump, and we were really surprised what our classifier thought. 
Uh, jokes aside, I'll pass you on to Ava, who will talk about our struggles. Should I come over here? I'll come over here. Hello. So, yeah, um, as you can see, there are some really um, mean technical challenges that we had to overcome. I'm not going to talk about any of these. If you're interested, let's discuss it after this presentation, because there was something else going on meanwhile, which is probably going to be more beneficial to hear about all these maker students in the room. Listen up. Like, that was us uh, in midway through the project, <laughs> saying, fine, fine, everything is fine. Nothing was fine. But uh, basically, what happened is, if you don't want to be there in two weeks' time or four weeks' time and you're doing your final project, um, yeah, uh, just listen to this story. So we all know about the Agile Manifesto and the uh, XP values, and you know we've been using it since we were here. And then life comes along and says, oh, you know, all those things that you're planning to do, they're probably not going to go according to plan. Um, but hey, next thing you know, you're looking at the screen and things don't work the way you want them to work. And, and then you think, oh my gosh, I wish I had more time. So I have a great idea. I'm just going to put these XP values on the side. And, and you know, I'm just going to deal with this issue right now. And then once I sorted that out, I'm going to go back to the XP values straight away. And you know, you're not lying in that moment because you really think that is important. And you have that file right next to you. It's a very important file, pile, VIP. Yeah, but uh, you, you have your eight hours of sleep in that pile, you have your you know, drinks with your mates, you have, you have your healthy diet, your, your gym membership, everything is in that pile. And once you finish that task, you're gonna go back to that pile. And then <laughs> what you find that when you put your XP values in that pile, actually things not gonna go according to plans at all. In fact, things gonna go down real quick. And the first thing, <laughs> What we noticed is the breakdown in communication that happened real fast. We stopped talking to each other, more or less, as a team. Uh, everything was fine uh, <laughs> at that point. But then, so obviously it's kind of difficult to give feedback when you don't listen or talk to each other. So feedback was out the window. Uh, what was the next one? Respect. Oh yeah, respect. <laughs> Pretty much non-existent. We, you, you know, you might think that okay, yeah, that person is doing whatever. I'm not sure what they're doing because I'm really so focusing on my task. And once I finish, we're gonna talk about it. But right now, we haven't got the time. And and then you you just basically not taking any responsibility because you say it's it's the other people's fault. You know, like you would be doing a good job probably if everybody else was there to support you. But you know, what the hell? You know what they're doing? Like nobody knows. Anyway, so that's the moment to stop and do some self-reflection because you pretty much then very likely that you are being on the wrong track uh, because it's, it's simply fear. Uh, once, once you stop working together as a team, uh, fear of, of not succeeding is actually is pretty, pretty increasing very, very fast. And that makes you kind of freeze, which is exactly the opposite of being agile. So that means that you know, you're not going to adapt your processes, nothing's going to change, everything's going to be very static. And, and that's, that's the difficult bit, when, when you need to have the courage to sit down and have a very honest conversation. And you know, it's, it's been no bed of roses, <laughs> no pleasure cruise, but we, we got there at the end. And I think... I think, you know, it's probably too much to say that like Phoenix is from the ashes because that's very cheesy. I'm not supposed to say that, but something really great did come out of this thing and Katie is going to tell you all about that. So using the same XP values as Ava, I'll now explain how we turn these key values from weaknesses into successes. So the first was communication, the importance of listening to other people's opinions. The second was respect, the importance of not being inflexible about one's own opinions and letting one's own ego get in the way of an optimal solution. The third was feedback, <laughs> the importance of conflict resolution in a way which preserves rather than damages relationships which are ongoing. 
And finally, what we've learned is courage. The importance of a creative, of creative tension. The roots to achieving the correct outcome by the process of thesis, antithesis, and then synthesis. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Woo!